Gracious God, our heavenly parent, we thank you for this time of worship. And as we have sat at your presence this morning to meditate upon your word, we ask the Holy Spirit of God to speak to us, give us the grace to heal to your voice. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable before you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, the Savior to come. I thank God for this privilege of worshiping you with all this morning. And special thanks to Reverend Benjamin Inbaraj who invited me and thanks to the secretary, treasurer, members of the committee and all the congregation members. And I bring greetings on my behalf and behalf of my family and behalf of the Gurukul Lutheran Theological College and Research Institute. And I gratefully remember this morning, it was during Reverend Benjamin Inbaraj's time as Presbyter in charge of CSSN Marks Church, Selayu, in the year 2009. I applied and got selected for this pastoral ministry in the Diocese of Madras, and I'm thankful to God and to the pastor for all his support extended. Every Sunday morning, I'm reminded of one of the classes that I was attending at the Tamil Nadu Theological Seminary, Madurai. It was one fine morning, one professor came to the class and he addressed the students who were sitting there and said, Dear Tambi and Tangachi, because that's how they call us. And they said to, and he said to us, Dear friends who are going to become pastors, please remember what I'm going to do now. Maybe whatever the things that you learn for four years, if you forget, that doesn't matter. But this you keep in mind, he said. And he asked me and asked us a question, do you know attitudes in the Bible? As we all know, the Beatitudes, which is found in Matthew chapter 5 to 7, and one of those is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. But he said something interesting, and especially he said, whenever you go and preach in city churches, you have to remember this. He said, preachers who preach short sermons, for they will be called again, he said. So I am always reminded of this uh, modern the attitude which he taught uh, as students in TTS when we were doing our BD studies there. Walter Michel, an American psychologist, has done a very interesting research at the Stanford University. The, the research topic was on waiting. And uh, the test or the research which he did was famously known by people as the marshmallow test. Maybe probably some of you should be knowing about this. The study is something like this. Young children were given two options. One to have one marshmallow immediately or to wait and have two later as a reward. And the Results of this research was very interesting. They found out that children who were able to wait tended to have a better life outcomes that includes higher SAT scores. SCAT, we all should be knowing, that scholastic assessment test scores. And they had healthier body mass indexes and more successful professional careers. Somebody said, all human wisdom is summed up in two words. One is waiting and another is hope. And these are the themes for Advent season as also we all know. And with this background, the theme for our morning devotion or reflection given by the Diocese of Madras is waiting prayerfully for the coming of the Lord. Waiting prayerfully 
for the coming of the Lord. For this, the text that we're going to spend time in reflecting is the gospel reading that was read to us this morning, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. And this is the parable of the ten bridesmaids, or we call parable of the ten virgins. And this is a series of parables that, uh, that are found in the 24th and 25th chapters of the Matthew's Gospel. The series of parables reflect on two things. One is eschatology, things about the end times, and another one is parousia, which is about the second coming of Jesus. As we are going to uh, start observing the Advent Sunday, the coming Sunday on the 1st of December, we are all waiting, or we are all preparing ourselves to celebrate the coming of the Lord, that is the first coming of Jesus, the Christmas. But what about the second coming, the Parousia? And how should we be waiting for the coming of the Lord is the focus for this meditation. And we will be meditating this sermon into three simple points. The first sub I would like to tell is being adequate in waiting. Being adequate in waiting. Kindly turn with me uh, your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 1 to 13. More than the weddings that we have nowadays, the weddings in Palestine are a great occasion for them because uh, the life marked by the oppression of the Roman government and the economic hardships that they were facing, marriages or the weddings were the times of great joy amidst this life tensions. And it's so interesting to know that even the rabbis of that time agreed that a man might even abandon the study of the law to share in the joy of the wedding feast. We all know that Jews give much importance for the study of the law, the Torah and other things. But the rabbis at that time gave the lenience that people who wanted to join in this wedding festivals or even uh, given lenience to avoid studying the law itself. And we see that uh, the Bible mentions 10 virgins. I was just thinking, why 10? Why not another number? Maybe 12, 15 or something else. And when we look into it, the Talmudic authorities, the, the Jews who deal with the laws of the Jewish customs, they say there were usually 10 lambs in the bridal processions the, during the weddings uh, in Jesus' time or in the biblical times. And among these 10, while Jesus was telling this parable, five were wise and five were foolish. And outwardly, as we read the first verse, all the 10 were about to go for the wedding. So in outward ways, all the 10 were looking prepared, but what made the difference of being wise and unwise or foolish is what we could find from verse 3 and 4 of the 25th chapter of Matthew's Gospel. When the foolish took their lambs, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lambs. So we see what made the difference between these both is the preparedness. And not just the preparedness, because even the foolish virgins were also were preparing something. But not just preparedness, but adequate preparedness. And I was just wondering, why these foolish virgins did not have this preparedness? And I thought that probably these five would have been mingling with their team alone, and they did not know what the other wise virgins were prepared of, or maybe the other way around. The five wise virgins did not worry about or bother about the other foolish uh, virgins, whether they have enough oil for meeting the bridegroom. And this gives a very important lesson to the church. For a community living, groupism is very dangerous. 
If you and me want to identify with a single group, we are eventually missing something we could not come to know from other people. So for a community, for a church, it is an, a community or an assembly which is called to live together for the mutual benefit of each other. And the very crucial thing in the story is the delay of the bridegroom. Because we see both the foolish bridemaid or the virgins or, and the wise virgins, both of them were prepared for the bridegroom's coming because that's, that's why they all came uh, uh, to meet the bridegrooms. But, but the interesting thing is only the wise virgins were prepared for the bridegroom's delay because the delay played a very important role in this parable. The wise were only prepared for the bridegroom's delay. And Matthew was writing this gospel for the believers roughly around half a century after Jesus' resurrection. And they were awaiting for Jesus to come again, the immediate parousia. And as it was getting delayed, he was encouraging them to be prepared, to be adequately prepared for the coming of the Lord. And it's almost 2,000 years and more. Jesus has not had come. Will he come? Many of us do not think about it. And we take it very lightly that because there is a saying, keep on coming that Jesus will come, Jesus will come again, and he is not coming again. And there are, it is very sad to see that there are people who are not at all prepared for the coming of the Lord. We should be praying for them that they should show some signs of preparedness for the coming of the Lord and to meet him. And we as people of God who are in preparation, this parable and the scripture calls us or challenges us this morning that just preparation is not enough or it is the adequate preparation that is important for meeting or as we wait for the coming of the Lord. Waiting without preparation is futile. So let us remember this morning as we are preparing ourselves, also as we are waiting for the coming of the Lord, let us be adequate for His coming while we wait. Secondly, being alert in waiting. First, being adequate in waiting. Secondly, being alert in waiting. When we read the sixth verse of the chapter, but at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out and meet him. Sometimes this happens even now, nowadays. When wedding take, uh, takes place in churches, not in this church, maybe in other churches, either the pastor or the inviters do not know when the bride and the bridegroom will come for the wedding. We all will be waiting. And suddenly somebody will come and uh, shout this in the vestries of the church saying, the bride has come, the bridegroom has come. But thankfully that doesn't happen because this happened in the midnight. So it was a custom and it was an expectation from the public opinion stating that somebody should give a hint of when the bridegroom will come. So a person from the bridegroom's family will come before, maybe as a pilot, before the coming of the bridegroom and would say, behold, be ready, look, here is the bridegroom, come and meet him. And this may happen at any time. And here we see that it happened at the midnight. So all got up and started to trim their lambs. We read in 8th and 9th verse of the chapter, the foolish said to the wise, give some of your oil for our lambs are going out. But the wise replied, no, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourself. We might think once we read this verse that these wise virgins were selfish, isn't it? They did not want to share what they had. But instead to look at them as selfish, they were acting very wisely. Because if they would have shared the oil that they had, it would not be enough for both of them. 
It is better to lead the procession with the bridegroom to the full way with at least five lamps burning instead of having a bright start of a procession with ten lamps burning and with dark ending of the procession. So they were acting very wisely instead of looking at them having acted in a selfish way. And even it is from this, it is a warning to the church that outwardly, as I said earlier, everyone were looking prepared in a way, but only the crisis time divided them who was prepared and who was not ready. We are called to be beware, but there is nothing like ready-mades in Christian spirituality. And there are very important life lessons that we could learn from this parable is certain things cannot be obtained at the last time. And certain things cannot be borrowed for life. For a Christian, for being a spiritual Christian, you cannot borrow the spirituality of your parents or your grandparents and claim that as yours when you meet the Lord. So certain things in life cannot be borrowed and certain things in life cannot be obtained at the last minute. So there are two things we meditated this morning as we are waiting for the coming of the Lord. One is to be adequate while we wait. And secondly, let us be alert in waiting. The third thing and the finally, being approved for waiting. Being approved for waiting. In other words, those who wait in adequate preparation or those who wait in alert will we obviously be approved for their waiting. When we read the verse 10 of the chapter, and while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet and the door was shut. We did not know when these five uh, foolish virgins went to buy oil, whether they got it or not. Jesus himself did not tell that, but probably they would have got it. But what is the point of having the oil when all the event is over? When the bridegroom has come, when the procession is over, when the door is shut, what is the point of having enough oil to burn their lamps? The next we read in verse 11 and 12, later the young women came along saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I do not know you. And even here, the bridegroom's attitude seems to be a little harsh, isn't it? But the thing is, it was a great honor or a privilege for these virgins given to be a part of the wedding banquet, but they have miserably missed exercising the responsibility and breached their privilege. The foolish virgins almost ruined everything, an offense or an insult beyond reckoning. And the thing is, at the end of the day, the wedding took place very well. It is so unfortunate that these foolish virgins could not be the part of this great joy and celebration. The loser were the unprepared always. Spurgeon, the great theologian and who was called the Prince of Preachers, when he was commenting on this passage, he said, when that door is once shut, it will never be opened. There are some who dream about an opening of that door after death, but there is nothing in the scripture to warrant such an expectation. Any larger hope that revealed in the word of God rather than revealed in the word of God is a delusion and a snare. We see that those who are prepared were approved and they were adorned as wise. Whereas the unprepared have to regret. In a nutshell, to look into this 
parable and this passage it tells the wise were on a purpose as we children of god are we on a purpose of living in this world and as we are in the preparation to celebrate the lord's first coming the christmas and also awaiting to meet him for during the time of a second coming are we having the purpose for sure to meet him this morning gives a call or a challenge that as we are waiting for the coming of the lord prayerfully let us be adequate while we wait let us be alert while we are waiting and let us be approved on waiting let us bow down our heads and look to god in prayer committing ourselves gracious god we thank you for this time of reflection thank you for the holy spirit of god ministering us to understand your life giving word as we are in the time of observing the advent and to celebrate your coming give us the grace to wait prayerfully purposefully with adequate preparation and be alert always during our time of waiting and be approved by you for the waiting for you we once again thank and praise you we commit ourselves continue to inspire us through your word we give you alone all glory and honor in jesus most precious name we humbly pray amen because we fixed on this it will not change not only keep changing 